not only does the incompetent finance minister not know the inflation target, she doesn't know that you lock in low rates when you have the chance. Why did he hire the worst mortgage broker in the world to be our finance minister? <laughs>
levies a case of uh, prima facie in before Chris Dontremont now because Greg Fergus can't rule on this because he's the one that the question of privilege is directed to. So conservative speaker Chris Dontremont will have to rule on this and that will take, you know, a couple of days at least to get through this. Um, and then we'll find out where this may be going. But as it stands right now, the conservatives and the bloc, they both want Speaker Fergus out. That's right. They've expressed their non-confidence in the Speaker of the House. It's very similar to expressing non-confidence in the government in that you need the majority of members of the House to express non-confidence. So with the bloc and the conservatives all expressing non-confidence, you don't have enough members to make Fergus resign. And the interesting thing that uh, Chris Warkington does get to um, is he states that in the previous case, Peter Julian had stood up and said, well, you know, um, we're going to we're going to give the speaker the benefit of the doubt. But if this happens again, if this happens again, you know, then we're going to have to act on it. Well, it happened again. So what are you going to do? So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. But in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, I'll, I'll show you what the liberals did to rebut this, to try and make it go away. And it is so comical the way they did it. I'm not even going to preface this. I'm just going to show you. So the Liberal Party of Canada posted this on Twitter slash X. Please see the following letter. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't even say anything. They just say, please see the following letter. And the letter reads, Dear Mr. Fergus, I am writing to you today about an event that was posted to our Liberal website for your writing, which had language that was partisan in nature. The language that was posted on the event page of liberal.ca was the auto-populated standard language we use for events on our website and was posted without your knowledge and as a result of a miscommunication between the party and the writing association. This language has been corrected. The Liberal Party of Canada unequivocally apologizes to you for this mistake and we take full responsibility. Regards. Azam Ishmael, National Director, Liberal Party of Canada. There's a few problems with that. Um, number one, they say that, oh, well, you know, we used auto-populated standard language. Well, wait a minute. Um, you're saying the auto-generated standard language in an event is to criticize Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives? So again, we have the screenshot of what we showed in our previous video, but I'll just read the, the pertinent uh, aspects of it. Quote, while Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives propose reckless policies that could risk our health, safety, and pocketbooks. They're trying to say that that's standard language that goes into every liberal event. Uh, bro, come on! Come on, man. Like, don't even. It's not even like it's not the fact that they're lying. It's not a good lie. So all they did is they called up the their national director and they said, "Okay, we need a way to kind of take the heat off of uh, Fergus because um, this is going to blow up. So you guys are going to take the fall for this one." Okay, I'll write a letter. Really, Greg Fergus wasn't paying attention to what was coming out of his office again, and then one of his people wrote that, sent it off. It got posted. He got caught, and then after he got caught, they said, oh, crap, and then they pulled it down, and then they deleted it. And this is just damage control to try and take the heat off of Fergus. So in the letter, it says that the website has been corrected. Let's take a look at that. A summer evening with the Honorable Greg Fergus. It has been too long since I have had the opportunity to see you, and we must change this. That is why I am writing... <laughs> really? That is why I am writing invite you to join me once again along the beautiful Ottawa River at Zibby's Panorama Room and Terrace in order to enjoy a fun-filled summer kickoff barbecue with good cheer, refreshing drink, and appetizing food. What? Wow. <laughs> Did they proofread that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the same people who came up with the grocery code of conduct because it, it it reeks of the same standard of work. Like, are you kidding me? 
Do you suppose they just plugged something into like Chat GPT and away it went? With no, I think Chat GPT would have actually got the grammar right. You I think, think this so? is actually somebody that tried to write this quickly and get it out. So clearly, nobody proofreads anything. Like that, that just goes to prove the case. Nobody proofreads anything that comes out of Greg Fergus's office. Otherwise, those grammatical mistakes wouldn't be there. Well done, Greg. Uh, um, I don't know what's going on in your office, but uh, keep it up because it's going to be all the more easier to kick you out of your current job. Anyhow, um, that's the follow-up on the Greg Fergus scandal. The latest scandal. Right, the latest one, because there's bound to be more. And, um, and there have been in the past as well. And the other two still need to be resolved, so we'll see what happens. But... Uh, on to question period today, and um, you know, the uh, in in the previous week it had died down. It'd become almost like a funeral. Yeah, not this time, folks. The honourable leader of the opposition. Not only does the incompetent finance minister not know the inflation target, she doesn't know that you lock in low rates when you have the chance. Remember, the prime minister was saying, "Don't worry, we can double the national debt because interest rates are low." Yep. Glenn, problem is. I told him at the time that they should lock in those rates for 10 years or 30 years with long-term bonds. It turns out they didn't do that, and now $400 billion of that debt will roll over into these higher rates, forcing Canadians to spend more on interest than on health care. Why did he hire the worst mortgage broker in the world to be our finance minister? That would be Christian Freeland who he's referring to there. <laughs> So, yeah, and Pierre makes such a good point here because what he's talking about is the fact that they took out all this debt. They took on all this debt for the SERP payments, right? But they didn't take out that debt in, in long-term loans. So what that means is that loan matures and then it rolls over and then it has to, um, it has to uh, accommodate the new rate. So what he's saying is, if you're going to do that, then you better take this out in, in long, long-term long 10-year bonds. Well, they didn't. So the interest rates are going to skyrocket. Absolutely. And that's what he's talking about, in that it's going to roll over, and then it's going to cost us, the Canadian taxpayer, huge amounts in, in debt servicing and, and interest. So that's... <laughs> that's what he's talking about. And then you hear Freeland and the rest of them try and use big words like fiscal responsibility. I don't think so. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, it's clear that the Conservative leader is in a grouchy mood. Yeah. And I think we all know why. The only thing he knows how to do is talk down Canada. And what he just cannot bear is the reality that thanks to our fiscally responsible economic plan, inflation is at a three-year low. Inflation has been in the bank for That's good news for Canada and Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. You know what I love? When inflation goes up, well, that's not the Liberals' fault. That's a worldwide phenomenon. That happens everywhere. Liberals had nothing to do with it. But when inflation comes down, they're responsible for that. It was their good thinking and their good policies. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing as, as she was saying that. So actually, Fox beat me to that. And uh, But it's true. And Freeland, why do you think Pierre would be grouchy? All Canadians are grouchy right now. All Canadians are furious with your party. Have you checked the polls? Because you're 20 points behind. And you're 20 points behind because Canadians are literally pissed off from coast to coast. Why? Because we can't afford anything. Because you've completely destroyed this country. That's why. Think that you pay down debt by borrowing more, that you stop inflation by printing money, and that you fight the drug overdose crisis by legalizing hard drugs. So at least they're consistent in their irrationality, Mr. Speaker. But now they've been forced to backtrack right before the election on their legalization of hard drugs because Canadians are revolting against the policy. Today we have a motion that will be voted in the House to permanently ban hard drugs. We'll 
will this government vote for that motion or will they admit that they plan to, to, to legalize drugs again after the next election? Spoiler alert. It was voted down. <laughs> Just saying. Um, and yeah, it was uh, it was a motion to prevent any future government from actually legalizing hard drugs. And it was voted down. You know, surprise, surprise. But again, he, he, he calls it the hypocrisy and, and the ridiculousness perfectly. The liberals think in order to bring down inflation, you spend more. In order to reduce the drug problem, give everybody drugs. It's like they do the opposite of what you should do. The Deputy, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is wearing more makeup than I am today. <laughs> now, I think it's wonderful. I'm gonna ask. Number one, that was ridiculous. Number two, Aren't the liberals always the ones like trying to blur gender roles and stuff like that? So do you think they should be making fun of a man for wearing makeup? Right. Number three, I don't think Pierre wears makeup. It doesn't look like it. I'm no expert, but he doesn't look like he's wearing makeup. No, but I think this is Christian Freeland's very unintelligent way of trying to say that he's a phony. And it's, it, it doesn't land at all. No, it doesn't. Listen to everybody in the house. It's everyone's like, what? What? They were booing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was saying boo earns. Yeah. Colleagues. Minister of Finance to withdraw that comment. We don't comment on the appearances of members. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of uh, Finance. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm sorry, I withdraw that comment. You can continue with her. She has 25 seconds left on the clock for her answer. <laughs> what a clown! They're all clowns. That whole party's a bunch of clowns. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And then she sits back down. It's still your time, you dummy. Um, the fact is, Mr. Speaker, the conservative leader is phony all the way through. He is phony when it comes to his concern about the economy. All he can do is talk our country down. And he is phony when he talks about his concern about the opioids crisis. He tries to score cheap partisan points. It's just not right, Mr. Speaker. You know what else is just not right? Is you can't call someone a liar in Parliament, but apparently you can call them phony. And of course, Greg Fergus doesn't do anything, doesn't reprimand her again, just lets her get away with it. This is the danger of a partisan speaker. Right. And and the conservatives are just like, whatever, man. We, we know you're not going to do anything. And... Again, it's Canadian citizens who lose. When we have a biased speaker in the House, he does not conduct himself properly. He does not treat all parties equally. And this is what we end up with. The good news, the good news is I think that, um, I don't think that the, the NDP are going to be able to sit by and let more speaker scandals go by. Um, especially if there's some significant evidence found as a result of some of the investigations in, in the two of them, right? In, in Rachel Thomas's uh, uh, prima facie case where her, her remarks were deleted from, from Hansard and, and in this case. So it's not going to be too long before they're going to actually have to side with the conservatives and the block because again, time's running out. The clock is on for the next election around the corner. So they're going to have to start distancing themselves at one point. They already got what they wanted in terms of their pharmacare and, and the dental plan and all of that crap. So at this point, there's not really much else for them to go and get. So they don't necessarily have to side with the liberals on these non-supply related issues like a speaker scandal. Time will tell 
but I think we're getting to the end of uh, Speaker Fergus's reign, and he can he can continue acting all partisan as he wants. The Conservatives are going to keep calling it out, and sooner or later, he's going to be on the unemployment line when it comes to an MP's duties. 